This this is what has been fired on this table. This is a civilian neighborhood. There are no soldiers here. There are no there are no military installations here. This is strictly harassment to get these people to move away from the border so that the Israeli tanks can can move at will. They want these people cleansed from this area. It's that simple. And it's a way to get people to be humiliated and destitute again. In Gaza, you can see also the extent of house demolitions, much more extensive than in the, in the West Bank. The whole neighborhoods have been demolished. Hundreds of people do not have any houses anymore because they are next to settlements or next to the border, which is, of course, a clear violation of humanitarian law. People have no chance to get their personal items out. They have no chance to call for help. And this is far away from most media outlets. You are amongst the very few journalists who have even seen this. European or American journalists who have even been here because people are afraid to come or it's too hard to come. And one of the things we were told in Gaza by a very respected Palestinian a psychologist who had just completed a study of a thousand Palestinian children was that they had discovered that many of these Palestinian children no longer had a will to live, that they were so dehumanized and so affected by seeing their fathers particularly beaten by Israeli uh, defense forces that the psychological condition is one of the dimensions of the conflict that is not widely understood. Palestinians called for an international observer force that would stop the violence. But this action was blocked by Israel. Finally, a group of Palestinian and Israeli human rights activists together created the International Solidarity Movement which has brought people from around the world of all ages and backgrounds to provide a nonviolent international presence to try to fill this need. Rachel Corey, a 23-year-old American student, went to Gaza to join in these efforts, sending back emails to her parents. I have been in Palestine for two weeks and one hour now, and I still have very few words to describe what I see. It is most difficult for me to think about what's going on here when I sit down to write back to the United States. Something about the virtual portal into luxury. I don't know if many of the children here have ever existed without tank shell holes in their walls and the towers of an occupying army surveying them constantly from the near horizons. I think, although I'm not entirely sure, that even the smallest of these children understand that life is not like this everywhere. It was uh, a Sunday um, afternoon in Charlotte, about noon actually, and I received a phone call. And my uh, son-in-law, Kelly, was on the phone and um, he asked if Craig was there. And something about the way he asked made me realize, I, I felt right away that something was wrong. And, and then I asked, why, Kelly? And he hesitated for a minute and he said, we've had some very sad news. And then my daughter, Sarah, I could hear her in the background. And she got on the telephone and she said, Mom, it's Rachel. And I, I think the first words out of my mouth then were, is she dead? of farmland and other property, uh, Palestinian property by Israeli destruction forces and soldiers. The bulldozer drove up and it kept going and she tried to move back but she couldn't move back and she got caught underneath. She got caught underneath the bulldozer. 
many other internationals began to surround the bulldozer and yell at it and tell us that there's somebody there and it did not stop. Where Rachel was killed, she was protecting a doctor's home. And that's important to realize. And, and the three children, his wife, she knew that family, and, and, and that doctor felt that Rachel was like a, a daughter to him. He bought that house. It was in the middle of a the neighborhood. There were other rows of houses between his house and the border. Those other homes, those other streets were all destroyed, and now it was his turn. Uh, and I've had people say, well, she was in a war zone. And Cindy points out that war zone is people's it is people's neighborhoods. That, those are children. I'm here for other children. I'm here because I care. I'm here because children everywhere are suffering and because 40,000 people die each day from hunger. I'm here because those people are mostly children. We have got to understand that the poor are all around us and we're ignoring them. We have got to understand that these deaths are preventable. We have got to understand that people in third world countries think and care and smile and cry just like us. We have got to understand that they are us. We are them. My dream is to stop hunger by the year 2000. My dream is to give the poor a chance. My dream is to save the 40,000 people who die each day. My dream can and will come true if we all look into the future and see the light that shines there.